Hello and welcome. Today we are looking at the Seafly Dream 1903 drone. This is a brushless dual GPS uh, quadcopter that has plenty of automated features such as waypoints, auto takeoff, auto land. It has a 1080p wide angle HD camera with a two axis gimbal. It has Wi-Fi FPV streaming for a very good distance. So a very neat quadcopter. So now let's check this out. Now the drone comes in this simple white rectangular box here and it says Seafly Dream. And you could see a nice clear view of the quadcopter right there in front of the box. And it's uh, a pretty plain uh, packaging as you can see. There's nothing on these sides here. On this side here just has some information on the app and right here there's a QR code for the Seafly app and right here in the back you can see the red model or version of the quadcopter and there's some stickers here that say uh, you know Seafly Dream 1903 so a, a pretty straightforward uh, packaging design uh, it does say 18 plus danger so that's about it so now let's open it up and see what's inside here so right away here is the drone and the packaging and so let's take a look at the drone here very nice it uh, highly resembles a DJI spark so pretty cool look to it let's remove this portion right here and here's the middle layer right there you can see the transmitter and here's the uh, transmitter how it looks it somewhat resembles the dji one not entirely but has more or less the same size and here is the uh, manual or booklet. Here is the, um, or one part of the charger right here to charge its battery. As you can see. And then here is the other part of the charger. Now they do have a um, US and European um, plugs, so keep that in mind here is a micro USB cable to charge the uh, controller and there is a port on the uh, drone uh, a micro USB port although that doesn't seem to be utilized but perhaps there is a uh, use for it here are two spare propellers and that's essentially it so now let's organize all this and take a closer look at the contents of the box now, taking a last look at the contents of the box, we have the drone itself, and inserted in the drone is its 11.4 volt, 950 milliamp LiPo battery. We have two spare propellers. We have the charger, which is basically the plug and the uh, charging component. We have the transmitter, and inserted in the transmitter is its 3.7 volt 2500 milliamp uh, lipo battery as well a micro usb cable to charge the uh, transmitter or possibly connected to the uh, rear of the quadcopter and last but not least we have the instruction booklet so that's essentially the contents of the box now let's take a closer look at the drone now taking a closer look at the drone this is a very nice looking drone that highly resembles the DJI Spark. And in fact, we will put it right next to an actual DJI Spark here so that you can see the comparison. They are very similar looking. Only the Seafly Dream has a, a lining right here on the sides that the Spark doesn't. But overall, they're very similar. They're both brushless. Uh, motor quadcopters that have optical flow and dual GPS and two axis gimbals and um, Even some of the parts look the same like the battery 
and the transmitter is somewhat similar looking so um, definitely a um, a uh, high likeliness to the uh, DJI Spark so now taking a further look at this quadcopter it is a brushless motor quadcopter right here in the front it has a 1080p wide-angle lens camera with a two-axis gimbal as you can see here and the camera shoots at around 25 frames per second and right here at the bottom there's its optical flow sensor or camera and um, doesn't appear like any photographs or video is taken with this camera it's purely used for optical flow this camera right here in the front is the primary camera um, as you can see it has four rubbery landing legs which are pretty good and do the job and right here on the back there is a, a little panel right here that you would fold out like this and there is an SD card slot right here on the left and right here on the right there is a um, micro USB port and I haven't been able to utilize it it doesn't seem like it either charges the battery or that you could connect it to a PC to uh, do a firmware update or you know pull video from the SD card perhaps there is a way to do that but I have not found it on the DJI Spark, this port is used to actually charge the battery if there's a battery inserted. But I didn't have any luck doing that here unless there's a certain way of doing it. Maybe you have to keep the battery on while you keep it connected or something to that effect. But anyhow, there is a um, micro um, USB port there. Uh, right here is the battery and you can just simply um, unlatch it there on the sides and this battery is an 11.4 volt um, 950 milliamp uh, lipo battery and it's uh, somewhat smart if you press it once it shows you the amount of charge you have and if you double press it or press it and then long press it you can actually uh, activate the quadcopter and this battery uh, charges using um, this charger right here so you simply like just connect them like this and then uh, plug this and the charge time with this battery uh, takes about an hour so it's uh, pretty fast to charge and the flight time that you get with this quadcopter is anywhere around 12 to 15 minutes with this battery and um, obviously the uh, DJI Spark battery, which is this one right here, is a little different and it is not compatible with this drone and vice versa. So um, that's just that. And this is a pretty well lit quadcopter for uh, orientation or early evening flying. If you just leave it like that, you can see that it has very bright LED lights there on each side. So very good for orientation and that's about it. Um, now let's take a closer look at its transmitter. Now taking a closer look at the transmitter, this is a very comfortable, um, nice transmitter from the Seafly Dream and I will put it next to an actual DJI Spark transmitter so that you can see how it compares. Uh, although they're not really identical, they have some similarities. As you can see, the um, the controller sticks have these uh, ridges there that are kind of similar. And it's somewhat similar. It has the dual antennas and stuff, but it's not exactly um, identical. But uh, now taking a closer look at all these um, controls here, it does have folding antennas and these are actual antennas they're not for aesthetic or cosmetic um, uses as you can see there there is a uh, an actual wire that goes up so um, this is a 
long range antenna system because it has I think a built-in Wi-Fi amplifier um, the rear of the transmitter has a, a battery case here and this doesn't take any AA or AAA batteries it takes in this um, lithium battery here that's a, um, a 3.7 volt 2500 milliamp uh, battery so and you would charge that right here at the bottom of the transmitter through the um, micro USB port here so as you charge it you would see this uh, light indicator show that it's charging it has this foldable uh, clip here that you can mount your mobile device or cell phone and you just simply um, release it like that and you have uh, enough space to put a decent sized uh, cell phone or mobile device but obviously not a tablet or anything like that and it definitely has a good grip and has some padding here so definitely a good um, mount there and it says C-Fly right here and uh, briefly going over the controls we have the left throttle stick and right rudder stick and um, right here we have the um, auto takeoff auto land button here we have the photo and video button so you long press it to take a video and short press it to take photos here is the on off switch here and um, this switch right here is uh, to initiate the compass calibration so um, you just uh, switch it like three or four times while the drone is initializing and you can commence the um, compass calibration process this is the return to home and the off position for these uh, sticks or for these switches is up so if you want to activate it it's down like that and that's how it is there uh, this switch right here are for the uh, different modes of flight here so we have uh, down which is addy mode or altitude hold mode but there is no uh, GPS positioning right here is P mode which is um, GPS positioning mode and then there's this S mode which is the surround or special mode where you can have the quadcopter do um, a circular orbit uh, provided that you give it a radius with the um, rudder that you go forward a bit or back a bit and it will fly that radius um, now you can't uh, activate initially you can't activate the uh, the transmitter if um, these switches are in certain configurations so the default initial configuration is that you have this in altitude hold here these up and um, I believe this one down as well I think this stick right here or the switch is not utilized it does beep when you switch it but it doesn't seem to serve any purpose but yeah, so you'll notice that it goes green if uh, this is down in A and if this is, uh, and these two are up. I believe if let's say this is down, see it won't, it won't start. And then you can, you have to make sure that the return to home is disabled in order to start. And the same with the modes here. If you have it in a, uh, let's say special mode here notice how it will not allow you to activate it and the same is if, if you have it in position hold it won't allow you until you put it in addy mode or altitude hold mode so you definitely need to have um, the return to home upwards or disabled and the uh, flight modes set to the bottom for a altitude hold now this little wheel here is to adjust the gimbal on the quadcopter so um, if you want to face the uh, camera up or down um, you can move the gimbal here and the camera has a, um, a 90 degree uh, tilt so you can face it all the way down using the gimbal and that's essentially it for the control it is a Wi-Fi amplifier and so you can get a tremendous amount of um, FPV range and control range with this the uh, control range with this transmitter is around 800 meters 
and if uh, you connect to this uh, transmitter's um, Wi-Fi signal, uh, you could have anywhere to or anywhere around 400 to 600 meters of FPV uh, signal. So very good uh, range with this transmitter. So now let's take a closer look at setting the quadcopter up for a first time flight and let's look at its app. Now setting the drone up for its first flight is pretty straightforward. Uh, once your batteries are fully charged on both the uh, drone and the transmitter and you've inserted your SD card, um, first you want to turn on the drone by first short pressing then long pressing the drone and then letting go. At that point it's initializing, you want to turn on your transmitter. And uh, before you turn on your transmitter, make sure that it's in the A mode, attitude or altitude or ADI mode, and that both these sticks in the center are up. And uh, this stick on the right is also uh, down as well. Uh, so now the light is green on the transmitter. The uh, drone is on, so now they're, they should be bound out of the factory. Uh, next, you want to um, um, either calibrate the gyros or the um, compass. Now, the app has an easier way of doing these operations because it's all visual on the screen. But uh, if you want to do the compass calibration manually, you just simply um, toggle this left switch a few times. And you notice that the colors change on the drone and the calibration process is pretty straightforward you basically uh, rotate the drone about uh, three spins horizontally until it changes color notice how it's green right there then you want to face it upwards and rotate it another three times three or four times clockwise or pro probably counterclockwise, it probably doesn't make a difference. And you set it down, and then you simply wait for these lights to go solid, indicating you have uh, GPS lock, and you're ready for uh, takeoff and the return to home should be accurate. Uh, so now that we are uh, calibrated and the transmitter is bound to the uh, quadcopter, now let's enter the app and let's take a look at that. So once in your mobile device's Wi-Fi settings, um, you will see two entries uh, for this drone. You will see a Seafly drone with a serial number, and then you will also see a Seafly controller with a serial number as well. Um, if you're using the controller, because you can fly this quadcopter with just using your mobile device, um, you will see the second Wi-Fi entry and it's recommended that you connect to that because you will get a longer uh, FPV range and um, better control. If you're just using your mobile device, you will obviously just get one entry, which is just the Seafly drone, and then you would simply connect to that and then you would operate the drone using your mobile device. Of course, the Wi-Fi um, FPV and the range will not be as good as uh, connecting to the controller and using the controller. So once connected to the controller, you would connect to this app right here, the Seafly app, and it's in the iOS and Android app stores. So you would launch that. And initially you will be greeted with a selection screen since Seafly has a few models. Uh, it has a Mavic type model, a Zero Tech Dobby type uh, drone, and lastly this Spark type uh, drone here. So you wanna connect to that. So you click Start Flying. And as you can see here, we have a Wi-Fi feed with the drone here, as you can see. So pretty good and when you connect to the 
um, Wi-Fi of the controller. There's a very long range there, so that's very good. Now, taking a look at some of the um, things with the app, um, right here, this will allow you to fly using the accelerometer of the phone, if you use this. Um, this will do an auto takeoff. This will do a um, return to home or auto land. Um, you can, at any time, control the quadcopter by using the virtual sticks on the screen. You have a picture-in-picture -picture view of the um, FPV feed or a map so that you can you can fly using that and when you're in the map mode uh, you have a few different modes here you can you can view um, satellite pictures or map pictures you can um, do waypoints using these options right here at the top and then you can start your route right here at the bottom and um, right here on the right you've got your photo and video options so um, here you could take video here you can take pictures here is your um, photo gallery of all the pictures and video you've you've taken this will show you um, the battery percentage on the drone, the number of satellites acquired, um, the uh, voltage on the transmitter, and then there's uh, several options here. Um, you can enable a geofence for um, beginners. Um, you can limit the distance and the height, and you can perform your uh, compass calibration and your gyro calibration and it's recommended that you do that from the app because it's a little simpler and easier to follow and uh, that's essentially it uh, we have some telemetry here at the bottom such as distance and height speed so on and so forth if you are just flying with the app and you want to tilt the gimbal we have this little drop down arrow right here where you can adjust the gimbal if necessary right here and so that's essentially it um, this is a smooth flying uh, quadcopter uh, although you cannot adjust the speed it has a pretty decent speed and it has a pretty solid uh, positioning thanks to the uh, optical flow and uh, GPS positioning so it is very stable, has a good stable hover. Uh, so let's take her for a flight and see how she performs.